There we go, you see the nerves and the jitters just wanted to make sure you go off absolutely straight. Not only racing on the legendary track, but also under the watchful eye of four times Olympic champion Matthew Vincent. He wants a safe and clean race. Go! He says that goes first one, then two, and you know, having clean, getting off the, the start nice and clean. As you go through the steps or the gears, bringing that cadence and rate up. Yeah, from nothing to everything, from standing stationary to the maximum speed in perhaps 12 or 15 strokes. That's the goal here for these women to get off a quick start, get the boat up to the fastest speed you possibly can, and then start to stretch out, start to stretch uh, the length of the stroke to become a bit more efficient. And, well, Thames and Leander, it's hard to call between them when you look at their form through the regatta, changeable conditions, but it seems to me that they're pretty closely matched at the barrier and probably the first couple of markers, so we could be in for another close one. Yeah, exactly. And some of the races we've watched unfold recently, the person that's gone out and led has been the one that's been overhauled. So, you know, be interested with this one plays to the same as what we've seen up to now, or it's this kind of babble to babble race as we move up the race course. Yeah, and you know, it is an afternoon of surprises. It's not always the leading crew that comes across the line first, depending on what unfolds down the track. And there's plenty of track ahead of these uh, two women's crews as we pass the quarter mile. That's about 400 metres into the 2,112 metre course. Nothing in it. And we thought it would be close. There was only like a second between them, or two seconds between them, in their semi-finals to, to the barrier, their times. Obviously, Thames were the faster crew to that market, but as you said, they raced at different points of the day yesterday, and the wind was very, very variable. Yep, still neck and neck, still close competition. And I think if you're in both crews, they've probably prepared themselves based on that data for the fact they could well be alongside for a while. They would also have thought about, OK, we might be a seat or two down or a seat or two up, not getting overconfident, not getting over worried by where you're sitting at this point in the race. But look, Leander starting to stretch out to a little bit more of a lead. That's the feeling from the Thames women. They'll be noticing from the corner of their eyes that the seats are starting to recede from them, and they need to make sure that they can get to an efficient position. As the flag goes down at the barrier, 600. 37 metres into the course, and uh, well, it's lane one, Leander have a lead. Yeah, Leander have taken the early advantage to the first main marker, uh, which we were kind of expecting, um, but the problem is it's, it's about that, that, that rhythm, and obviously with the course being longer than they're used to racing over 2,000 metres, they're racing into the wind as well, so that bulk mid-race pace is so important when you come off that really frantic, you know, energetic start to really find that pace that can really set you over the majority of the course. And th this part of the course, Mark, I really think Henley in particular is a difficult bit because you start to be further away from the bank. The noise can recede a little bit. You're not kind of get to halfway. Halfway's a bit further than you expect it to be because it's not a 2,000 metre course. And it's easy for the attention to slip. Conversely, it's a really great place to attack. It's quite early in the race. You've got to recover from that start phase. But if you have got the fitness and the preparation to be able to attack here, you can really make a decisive move. And I think that's understanding what you have in your toolkit as a crew, basically. What, what works best for you? Is it to attack early? Are you good at hanging on? Do you have the confidence to go early? Or do you want to kind of wait? You're a bit unsure of how you're feeling. You want to kind of use it a bit later. But it makes it even more difficult because that's got to come from a cox. They're the ones that are leading the boat. They've got to kind of try to monitor the way it's feeling, how we're moving, how we're in contact or behind with our competitors. So. There's, there's a lot of moving parts considered to consider when you're looking at these particular boat classes. Well, they're just passing through halfway, and it looks to me like the Leander crew have had a rummage in their toolkit, and they found a tool that has allowed them to take maybe a length or more out of the Thames crew in that last few hundred metres, Mark. We were saying, you know, can you deploy something there? It looks to me like they have exactly what you were talking about. They have the opportunity to push on and to take some distance here. And this is, if you're going to do what they've done, you have to go again. You want to make sure you break contact because this side-by-side -side racing, once you're out of sight, you're out of mind. And that's the thing. You can start to dictate, you know, the race 
And then if you're Thames, you're always looking over your shoulder. Where are they? Where are they? We want to we want to see them. We want to feed off them. I'm so. feeling your energy, Mark. You know, I can feel <laughs> what a fierce competitor you were. You know, if you if you have gone now, you've got to go again. <laughs> Super demanding. But you're absolutely right. And the crews that have struggled with the racing this afternoon been rode down, although they haven't had the determination to do that. And I think the Thames women are responding here. We can see Lucy Eyeball at bow and Ruth Taylor at two starting to push and call the Thames crew on. In those seats, you can get a sniff of coming back at somebody. You can shout to the rest of the crew. We're right and that confidence can lift everyone. Well, as they've come past Remnam, they've had that, that, that cheer from their fellow club members to try and lift them. That may be a really important part for them as, as one of their moves in the race and trying to maximise that. But once again, you come back to Leander, it's once again, you need to go again. You need to break that string or break that contact. In the Thames boat, the Cox, Natalie Kernan, 32 years of age, lots of experience behind her. Well, she'll be needing all of that experience now. She's got a ensure her athletes are rowing technically brilliantly, get their heads back in the right place and ready to recompose themselves and to respond in the third quarter of this race if they have to have any chance of doing what we've seen several crews do this afternoon at Henley and to come back through. And it's been in contact, you have to be in contact because that's how you feed off feeling that boat beside you. It's like a sixth sense, you can just draw them back. You kind of cling on to them and just pour a seat back every stroke. Meanwhile, in the bowels of that, the Ander crew will be wanting to make sure they get even more distance over the Thames Road Kaku and Cox. Costi Levy in the Leander crew, she wants confidence, she wants the process to be followed, she wants the crew not to be rattled by the attacks they can see behind them. And this is actually, a, that was a phenomenal move from Leander when they did it and they've catalyzed on it and moved that again. They've got that, that clear water, which is so important as you come into these closing stages. Once people and the crowd and spectators get going, they're trying to dampen those spirits of the Thames crew right now. Yeah, well, they're coming through the mile and the eighth marker here. That's 1,811 meet, uh, metres gone. Not that many to go now. And, well, Leander, it seems to me that they have controlled the aggression of Thames in trying to respond to them. And now they're into a strong pattern. And suddenly the spirits will be lifting here because they'll be starting to believe that this could be true. Yeah, and Leanne have had a really good morning so far. They've won the pair, they've won the women's four, so, you know, they're kind of feeding off that energy they have as a squad at the moment, which has just been, it's been an incredible morning for them. And it's a great start to the afternoon with this performance here. Well, Leander have their names many times on many trophies here at Henley, but this is the first opportunity they've had to engrave the name of the Leander Club and all of the women in this fantastic Leander crew on the brand new, beautifully sculpted by one of the top female sculptors in the country, the Wargrave Challenge Cup for club women's eight. And it's Leander crossing the line first, the engraver getting the toolkit out, ready to mark those names on black silver plate. Credit to Thames, they really did attack. Yeah, really impressive race from both crews there. You know, they attacked it from early on. Leander took the early advantage, would seen crews come back. Leander maintained another move. Um, but yeah, great race and a, a great regatta for both crews.